Hello, everybody. Welcome to Montgomery High School's Class of 2023 College Application Process Tutorial Video. My name is Keith Block. I'm one of the counselors at Montgomery High School. And without further ado, let's take you right to it. I um, want to first off lay out uh, what the goals of our presentation are for you. Uh, and basically, we're going to describe what the student responsibilities are, what parent or what uh, counselor responsibilities are, I should say, and uh, what teacher responsibilities are. We're going to show you how to do the student portion of this. Uh, we're also going to hopefully cover most of the things that we are pretty aware that you have questions about. Um, and we're also going to go ahead and obviously answer anything else that you may want to know. You can go ahead and type a question into the chat on the YouTube live. If you're watching this embedded on the Montgomery High School website, uh, you're probably asking how you can ask that question. So if you just click on the, uh, the YouTube logo on the video player itself, that'll open up this page within YouTube. And then you'll see the chat feature there on that page. And you can go ahead and type your question in. If we don't answer it during the course of the presentation, we'll be sure to, that we get it answered for you by the time that we are done. Um, overall process, we want to give you big picture. First thing we're going to do is uh, students and parents are going to provide some last minute information to counselors. We feel like we know the students pretty well now by the time that they are seniors, but uh, the student brag sheet and the parent point of view provide a final opportunity for our students and parents to just highlight anything uh, that they really have gotten into that maybe they didn't go in as in depth with us about uh, previous to this. So let's show you how to do that. Um, the first thing you're going to do is log into your Naviance account and get to your home screen, which I have up here. And then you're going to go to the top right and then click about me. You're going to click on surveys from your school and then we'll see that'll bring up the student brag sheet here and the parent point of view here. So if you click on this parent point of view, uh, you'll see just, you know, boxes here for quick questions. We don't need a novel in each of these uh, answers. Just a couple sentences that highlight the things that you feel are important about your child. You see a little note here that says to please save your answers often. I'm actually going to um, give you a different piece of information. Um, and I'm going to say to uh, absolutely 100% uh, just type all of this right into a Google Doc. Um, because <laughs> the thing that we know about this is uh, if you wait too long, it's going to time you out. It's not going to save your answers. Uh, and then you're going to lose everything that you just did. And you are not going to like that one bit at all. Another note that I want to give to you is if you look back here onto your uh, Naviance account screen at the bottom, you have only an op option to update. You don't have an option uh, to save. And that's okay because um, you can always go back in and update it. The reason I bring it up is because uh, when we do, uh, we, we do get a lot of emails about this. If you go back in to check and see whether or not uh, that has been completed, it will say in progress. Well, it's always going to say in progress. So don't worry about it. As long as you've updated uh, and it didn't time out on you, uh, you are fine. Don't need to contact us about that. So now that you provided us with some last minute information, um, we're going to talk about creating a common application account if you don't have one already. And we know that you already have an, a Naviance account. So we're going to need to link those two items. And not only are we going to link those two items, but we're also going to provide Montgomery High School with the permission to send transcripts, letters of recommendation, and the school profile via that Naviance common application marriage, which works really, really well. So let's show you how to do that uh, here first. So if I go back to my computer screen and I go to the common application, um, there is a, a, there are vi many videos out there about how to actually create a common application account, but I will not insult your intelligence by playing you a five minute video about how to type in your email address and your address and things like that. Um, if you go to commonapp.org and click create account, very couple simple steps to creating a first year student account. When you do uh, have that account, it, this will be the front screen that you get and uh, not going to have anything in this dashboard currently, but we're going to need to add a college, at least one college in order to complete this permissions task that I'm talking about. So you're going to go to the, uh, the college search and I'm going to add the College of New Jersey because it's my alma mater. So if you start typing anything, you'll get a refined search here. Just click that plus button 
and that's going to go ahead and add that to your My Colleges tab. So now we're going to need you to expand this box out. And the thing that we're concerned about in terms of granting permission is this Recommenders and FERPA tab. So now it's going to uh, tell you that, okay, before we can actually complete this, you just have to add uh, your most recent school in the education section, so that's no problem. Um, I'm going to click on Find School, and if we just type Montgomery, it should come up for us. There we are, the first choice, and we click Continue. Okay, so now I'm going to go down here, and we're going to click Continue there, just so that that screen saves. And now if we come back in here to our My Colleges tab and click on Recommenders and FERPA, we're going to go ahead and complete the release authorization. I'm going to read this here and say you do understand what the implications of this are. You acknowledge that the school that you attend does deal with this. And now we're onto the screen that we care about here. We're talking about either I do waive my right or I do not waive my right to see my recommendations and supporting documents. If you choose to not waive your right to review these, you understand here that this first checkbox is very important. It, it could be the decision of a teacher to decline to write over a letter of recommendation if you do not waive your right. So Obviously, we cannot demand that you make any one particular selection, but if we had a recommendation to give you in guidance, it would be that you do waive your right uh, to not see your recommendations. Um, understanding that once we do this, checking this box acknowledges that once we do this, we cannot make this change. So therefore, if you do select, I do not waive my right, and then one of your teachers uh, does say, well, listen, I'm sorry, I saw that you did not waive your right to see your recommendation. I, I'm gonna, not going to be able to write your recommendation. That's something you're going to have to live with. So again, we recommend waiving your right to see the recommendation, clicking that you understand. I will type in my name here and let everybody know that it is September the 15th, and I'm going to save it and close that. So that's very simple. You've now given permissions for uh, Montgomery to uh, send letters of recommendation, transcript, and school profile. So now the other thing we haven't done just yet is uh, we have not matched uh, our common application account and our Naviance account, and that's okay. So I'm going to show you how to do that right here. This is a very, very simple step. So again, if we go to our Naviance screen, and we're on our home screen, so you're going to go down here to the colleges I'm applying to. Now, I don't have any schools listed in the colleges I'm applying to, and that's totally fine. But if you see on the top here, I'm going to click Match Accounts. So all it's going to do is bring me to a screen where it's going to ask me for my common application, username, and password. sign in there and that will give me the authorization that I need there click I agree and then I'm just gonna click connect and wonderful I'm gonna be redirected back to Naviance so now you'll see up at the top of the screen there it does say that my accounts are matched and I am all good to go so now what we've done is to recap we've given counselors some information we have also taken our common app account our Naviance account we've linked them and then we have provided, provided the permissions uh, that we need as a high school in order to send out your information. You'll notice that when I did link those things, it imported the College of New Jersey into my uh, active applications from Naviance, or from Common Application, which is always a nice uh, little bonus. Okay, so we've done all of those steps so far. And the next thing that we need to do is we actually need to make a transcript request of our counselors because if we don't make a transcript request um, there's no way that the guidance staff is going to know uh, whether or not you're applying to the school so uh, let's do a, a separate request here on this uh, colleges I'm applying to section uh, let's just say I'm applying to Stockton Stockton University 
Uh, you know what? I'm, yeah, I'm going to pick the rolling deadline there. I'm going to reply via the common application, so I'll keep that checked. I have not yet submitted my application, so I'm going to leave that unchecked. Um, and you know what? Let me go back over here to the screen so you guys can see what I'm doing as I do it here. So I added, um, go back and show you. Clicking on this plus sign in our uh, colleges I'm applying to. I'll search for Stockton. And there it is. I'm going to apply rolling via the Common App, leaving this box unchecked. So now I have a choice whether to add this application or add and request transcript. I'm always, always, always going to hit add and request transcript. I'm applying for an, the initial transcript. Don't worry about the mid-year stuff. We'll talk about that later. And we're going to request that there. Now it adds it to the active applications. Um, and we are good to go. Now what happens uh, for that is it will uh, send your counselor an alert that you have added that to your list. You'll see here for the College of New Jersey, there's still no request listed. So if you just go in and edit this and you can make that transcript request, uh, that will also be added into your uh, counselor's list of schools to which they know they have to send your transcript, letters of recommendation, and the school profile. Without making that request, we will never ever know that you need materials sent to those schools. So we have to make sure that we build this list and we build it smartly. So some of you may be thinking to yourself, well, my child doesn't really know exactly which colleges they are applying to. You know, we're kicking around a lot of them yet. We haven't finalized the list. I'm just going to go ahead and put all those colleges in here just in case. I would say you don't need to do that for a couple of reasons. Number one, building it in pieces is okay. Is it easier if it's all done at the same time? Sure. Um, but if you do it, you add two now, you add two another in a, you know, in a couple of weeks, that's fine. Um, but we really would suggest adding only the schools to which you know you're going to apply into this list because first off, it just keeps things nice and order, uh, orderly. Secondly, um, the guidance office processes the first five colleges that you're applying to for free. And then after that, uh, it's five, uh, $2 rather, an application. So if you were to dump 65 schools in there uh, and your counselor processes all those requests and you're left with 60 colleges in there, even if you don't apply to 55 of them, the office has already processed all of those requests. Uh, so therefore, you're going to want to make sure that uh, you, know, you don't pay that $120 that you don't need to. So uh, please go ahead and only add the schools to which you know you're going to apply into that colleges I'm applying to list. Okay. Uh, we already spoke about uh, the importance of making sure you click that request uh, transcript field. So now that we've made that request of the counselors, we also need to make sure that the teachers have the proper requests and permissions in Naviance in order to uh, submit teacher letters of recommendation. So again, let's show you how we can do that. So if we flip back over to our Naviance screen here and we click on the Colleges tab at the top, you'll see letters of recommendation right here and you're gonna go ahead and click that. So if I'm going to go ahead and let's say I want my good friend, Mr. Belusu, to write a letter of recommendation for me, I would put that in there. Um, it would say, which schools do I want Mr. Belusu to write a letter for? And I would like him to send to both. No, you know what? I don't want him to send to Stockton. He's more of a TCNJ guy. I'm just going to select the College of New Jersey. I'm also going to say, thank you, Mr. B. You're the best and then I can submit this request. But before I submit this request, I wanna call your attention back here uh, to the colleges section. As a lot of you are well aware, um, not every school allows more than one letter to be sent. There are some schools that will say one required, one allowed. So therefore, it's, you have to choose one of the two teachers uh, you know, that you've asked to write a letter of recommendation for you to send to this school. This is the screen where you will choose which of your teachers uh, can send a letter of recommendation for you. Now, the great part about the Naviance system is that 
the system is sophisticated enough uh, to understand when you make those requests in that screen um, that the other teacher who you don't want to send to that one institution that only accepts one letter, the system will like gray out their box in terms of not being able to send it to that school. So while that's a wonderful thing in terms of being able to be selective about the schools that we are sending our teacher letters to, it also puts an onus on the students to ensure that there's a teacher request in the system for each of the schools to which they are applying. So if you do add, say, two schools initially to your college's I'm applying to list, and then a week later you add another two, you also need to make sure that you're going back into the teacher request screen and making the appropriate teacher requests because the system will not allow this, those teachers to send letters to schools for which they are not requested. So obviously it makes sense, but it just makes sure that uh, we are diligent about that. Um, what you see here uh, on the screen, there's a click here button, uh, which is just a, a pamphlet for uh, how to complete all of the steps that I just showed you. Um, and this presentation, along with the college application packet that I'm gonna mention in a couple of minutes, um, are both available to your children within the uh, Montgomery Guidance Senior Class Google Classroom. Uh, and they were all given access to that during their presentations in their English classes. So this is a pretty important step, um, and or not a step necessarily, but uh, a deadline. Everything that we just talked about, and I can't say it strongly enough, I'm not talking about the actual application. I'm just talking about the things we spoke about in this presentation. The student brag sheet, the parent point of view, linking Common App and Naviance, giving us the permission through FERPA to send the information, making the transcript request by building that college list, and doing the teacher recommendation requests. Those steps, which when you do them back to back, don't take very long. Those things need to be done 15 school days in advance of the first registration deadline to which you are applying. So what does that mean in reality for our students? Many of our students have November 1 early action deadlines. 15 school days prior to that is a day in early October. Those dates are listed in that college application packet that I referenced. So this way the students don't have to work it out. But what we need is that 15 school days because we do put a lot of care and time into writing these letters of recommendation and making sure that the system is uh, good to go when your child hits the send button on those college applications. So I'm gonna give you a couple pieces of information to put your mind at ease about some of this stuff. Colleges are very much used to getting application supplemental material, the transcripts, the letters of recommendation, after the deadline for college applications. As long as your child has hit the send button on the application prior to the due date, you're fine. If those supporting materials, SAT scores, things like that arrive after the application deadline, there will not be a penalty to your child. That said, we don't like the colleges to have to wait for anything after your child applies to that deadline. That's why we're requesting this 15 school day buffer so that we can ensure it all gets there. So um, let me give you a sneak peek inside some of this process. Even if your child submits the request on time as we requested, so let's say it's October the 10th for a November 1st deadline, um, they do those first seven steps and then they feel good about it. They uh, and I were to go in on October 15th and then teachers were to go in on October 15th and complete the recommendations and upload them and hit the send button on our end of Naviance. That is great, but it flows only to a certain point and then it kind of stops here in cyber limbo and it sits there until your child hits the send button on the application. Okay, so this way the application and the supporting materials all flow through at the same time. Your child is really the gatekeeper of whether or not information from the counselors and teachers can arrive at its destination. Now that's important to understand for one reason and one reason only, and, and this is something that will happen to most everyone out there, so I wanna make sure that I addressed it in this video. 
your child will have followed the, the steps that we asked. They will have given us the 15 school days. They will have submitted the application on time. And then despite all of that, they will receive an automatic email from the school to which they applied that says, we don't have your transcript, we don't have your letters of recommendation, and we don't have your school profile. Please contact your counselor. So you may be saying, well, how is this possible? The answer is because unfortunately, the college application process is not like Amazon and things do not arrive by drone six hours after we do them in the college application world. There are computer systems uh, involved at a lot of these colleges which do not exactly talk to each other or they don't talk quickly to each other. And it just takes time for colleges to match up the supplemental materials with the actual application. So when you receive that email, just exhale. And I'm gonna ask you to do something very difficult when you do get that email. I'm gonna ask you to do nothing for one week. There is, if you have followed, I promise you, I give you the Keith Glock 100% personal stamp of guarantee that if you have followed the directions that I've laid out here today and given us these 15 school days and requested the transcripts and requested teacher letters within that timeline, those materials will get there by the time the application deadline comes. And in asking you to wait a week before you do anything, you're just gonna have to have the patience that it requires for the colleges to match up what is thousands and thousands of student applications with thousands and thousands more student supplemental documents. So if after a week goes by that you log, your child logs into their portal and uh, they don't see that that material has been updated, they, not you as parents, but they are gonna pick up the phone and they're gonna call the college and say, hi, I got an email from you guys that says uh, that you, know, you don't have my transcript or my letters of recommendation, but I'm looking here at Naviance and it looks like all my materials are submitted. Would you mind checking just to make sure that they're there for me? And they'll put you on hold and uh, then they'll come back a couple minutes later and say, oh yeah, we have it, thanks very much. Um, because again, I promise you, it, it is simply a matter of people on their end taking the time to drag and drop files into the right place and check off boxes so that the computer system doesn't send automatic emails. Okay, that's all it is. So now your child has done the things that we as counselors and teachers need them to do in order to make this application process work. Um, they are gonna go ahead and actually now complete the actual college application. And, and the likelihood is that they've already been working on the college application alongside or before they even will have done any of the other things we just talked about them needing to request. And that's great. Um, most of the time, uh, you know, students are working initially on completing their common application. Um, but there are, other there are other applications out there. And sometimes you will have choices. You know, you, you can use the Common App. You can apply to an application that is directly associated with a school's website. There's other applications out there like the Coalition application. Um, but if there is an, app an option to use the Common application, we really want you to use the Common application. And the reason why we really like the Common application is because there are a lot of incentives for you to use it in terms of like peace of mind. Uh, there are updates that you will be able to see in Naviance when your, not, your Common application materials have been seen by the college and received by them. There you'll get a, another update within those screens about when that material has been downloaded. It even gives download confirmation codes um, for you in there. There's no penalty for using the common application at all as opposed to using a school's own website. Um, they're actually not even, they're not legally allowed to do that uh, to create a priority system. So it really is up to you, but um, we recommend strongly that if there's the common application option that you utilize the common application uh, for sure. Um, I mentioned other applications, direct to the institution applications. There's another application called the coalition application. Um, and it becomes relevant for our students, especially because um, Rutgers, for example, the school that we know that our students apply to more than any other college in the country, uh, does not accept a common application. They only accept applications through their own web portal 
or via the coalition. Coalition application is, is another website service that uh, many schools throughout the country, though certainly not nearly as many as the Common App, uh, will accept as a generic application. And my guidance on this is that if you're applying to Rutgers and you're also applying to another school that which accepts the coalition application, then sure, fill out the coalition application. Um, because why would you do two applications when you can just do one uh, that fulfills both schools? But um, that will be entirely up to you. So let's talk a little bit more in depth about some things uh, related to the application. Standardized testing scores. If your child is sending their standardized testing scores to a school either because they are required or within a test optional school, uh, you guys are choosing to send those test scores, um, you have to do that officially via the College Board website or your ACT account. It costs money to send that. $13, I believe, uh, to each school to which you're applying uh, to send those standardized testing scores. Even though you will list it on the common application or likely within the school's institutional application, that is completely unofficial and the colleges will be waiting for you to send those scores uh, via these official channels. So please make sure that you do that. We don't have the ability to do that uh, as counselors. It is not included in anything that we send. So uh, again, please make sure you're sending your own scores. So let's again now, let's just do a little quick recap. Um, council responsibilities. We're going to write a letter of recommendation, upload that recommendation along with the school profile and your child's transcript into Naviance and send that. Teachers are going to use the requests that they receive from your child and write the letter of recommendation and upload that as well to Naviance and send it. Within Naviance, you have the ability to see whether a teacher has sent a letter of recommendation or not. If the teacher has not sent that letter of recommendation, your child needs to contact the teacher directly. Counselors do not have any dominion over uh, teachers uploading and sending letters. We couldn't uh, police that because the, even if we wanted to because the system doesn't allow us to. Um, it's one of the kind of layers of insulation that we really enjoy uh, about Naviance. So please have your child reach out to the teachers politely and respectfully, uh, hopefully in person. Uh, as they get, you know, maybe within a day or two of that deadline if the teacher has not already submitted their letter of recommendation into Naviance. I want to talk about Rutgers specifically a little bit here. We already talked really about the top two items. Um, the third item is that unlike test, uh, standardized testing scores, schools like Rutgers and some others throughout the country utilize another website called SRAR. Um, it stands for Self-Reported Academic Record. And uh, you're going to fill out that Rutgers application. Say you're going through the Rutgers web portal. Um, and then it's going to say, well, great that you did this first part. But now we need you to use these login credentials that we've given to you. And uh, you're going to log into SRAR. You're going to request a copy of your transcript from your counselor. And then you're going to go ahead uh, and your child's going to just type in the classes that they got, uh, that they took and the grades that they got. Uh, and Rutgers, among a couple other schools that utilize this service, uh, are going to take your word for it. Uh, and then at the end of the school year, uh, Rutgers will send us an email and say, you know, hey, here are the 52 kids from Montgomery who are coming to Rutgers. Uh, could you please send us all of their official transcripts? So we will do that. And then they certainly compare what was sent by the student and what uh, we send the official transcripts. Uh, so obviously we want to be as truthful as possible. Uh, in those uh, initial uh, grade reportings. Um, another item just to note, uh, when you do get that transcript from your counselor, Rutgers asks for something called an NJ Smart ID. It is actually just your state student ID. It is, it is a 10 digit number. It's in the middle near the top of your child's transcript. And that'll be what they will put in that category for NJ Smart ID. Some quick do's and don'ts uh, here. Get started on the, these tasks. Parents, if you uh, have not completed the parent point of view, uh, please get on that. Obviously, your child's not gonna be able to complete the, uh, the fully complete the, the steps that are necessary in order to request transcripts and letters of recommendation from us unless you have completed uh, that parent point of view and they have completed the brag sheet. That's certainly the most time consuming piece of this pre-application process. Um, and you can probably get that done uh, really in 15 or 20 minutes. Uh, and the rest of the matching and all that other stuff should really only take a moment or two. Um, 
second bullet down, parents, I cannot stress any more strongly that you should not be calling colleges on your child's behalf. Um, it is a item that colleges perceive to be a college readiness item. Um, and they're making value judgments on that sometimes. Uh, they, they would often wonder why a student's parent would have to call to ask a logistical question on an application, and it leads them to wonder down the line, if your child is struggling in class, are you going to be the one emailing the professor? Or are they really going to be the ones that need to take the lead and, and email the professor or go to the professor's office hours in order to really understand what's going on? And uh, they analogize. Well, if mom and dad are calling now, maybe mom and dad are going to be calling then. And is that really the kind of student that we think is going to be happy and successful here at our college and university? So please keep that in mind uh, You know, when you're weighing out a decision whether to call a college uh, on your child's behalf. And I, again, I can't stress enough, please don't do that. Third item down, um, need you to follow the directions, need your child to follow the directions. For example, if there is a, one of those colleges that I mentioned where uh, we have one letter of recommendation which is required and only one which is accepted, um, do not go home and print out a letter from your violin teacher and you know your soccer coach from PDA and put those in an envelope and send them in the mail to the admissions office. Um, and, and you think to yourself, well, that's just, you know, it's just extra. And if, if they don't want it, they'll just throw it out. They won't consider it. It's not that big a deal. Well, no, that's not how the colleges feel about it. We often hear from college admissions reps the question, why do your kids and parents think that they know better than we do what we want? You know, we had 20,000 applications last year, and if every one of those applicants sent us two extra pieces of paper that we didn't want, what is, you know, just those thousands and thousands of actual physical pieces of paper? Think about what that looks like in a room. That, that's, it, it takes up space. It, 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 it clutters the process. It slows everything down. So doing that extra when it's not what they want, that's not extra. That's you being not a rule follower. So please, just follow the directions. Uh, on the opposite end of the spectrum, if you see questions on the application that say optional, uh, we really believe that for your child, optional means required. Because if you have an optional question that you don't answer, um, that means that you've done potentially less than somebody else who is applying to the same position. So uh, we always want to do all of the optional items within the application. College essays. Um, parents, if you've chosen to hire outside college consultants, and, and part of that is that uh, they are heavily editing your child's application to make it sound very, very formal, and uh, they're stressing the importance of using different parts of speech and the semicolon, and just to show how sophisticated your writing is, I'm going to caution you against that um, because we have to understand, number one, who our target audience is, uh, who is actually reading these, and where do we fit in uh, in the big picture? So where we fit in in the big picture is, is that there is humans, there are humans on the other side of this process actually reading this. So they read thousands and thousands of college essays. We want to be interesting above all. If we're writing, if we're writing a five paragraph analytical essay, um, we're not really doing justice to the process for the people reading it. And who's reading it? The majority of College admissions counselors are folks in their early, mid-20s, late 20s, early 30s. What are they going to want to read? Help them get to the bottom of the essay. Keep it interesting. If you're going back and reading through the essay and you say to yourself, this is boring, then you should tear it up and start over. And I, and I said those words to your children on Monday and Tuesday of this week, uh, you know, out of their English classes and, and I harped on the college essay quite a bit because I do believe that it is, um, it is the spot for, to showcase all of the wonderful things that our kids are doing in terms of, you know, the extracurriculars and the volunteering and all that stuff. This is the spot to make it real and show how those things have impacted your life and why those things um, potentially uh, have influenced the direction that you're going to want to go, college and beyond. 
So don't throw that opportunity away by trying to be this formal, forthright person that is, you know, quite frankly, boring. Um, so that's not really it's not really what we're looking for at, at all there. Lastly, um, want to uh, remind everybody that the college application uh, material packet is in the uh, guidance in your classroom, Google Classroom. Um, there is a checklist of to do's within that uh, application packet. So if you said, wow, we got a lot of information today and you go down that packet, you can physically print it and put check marks in the boxes and everything will be great there. Um, and lastly, on that last page, uh, there are frequently asked questions uh, because there are questions in the application process that we know that your child would really have no reason to know. How many students are in their graduating class? What is my phone number as a guidance counselor? Uh, things like that. Um, so uh, please review that packet, especially those frequently asked questions. And uh, from there, uh, I now will see if we have anything else in the chat that we need to answer. I want to thank you for watching this. Let's check that out. Welcome everybody back live here. Uh, let's take a look. I don't see anything in the chat. Um, so I'll give it another couple of seconds here, but can always feel free to uh, email your child's counselor uh, and you know we're, we're here for the seniors the entirety of the fall um, and well, we're here for the seniors at, at all times but most notably uh, now in the fall and uh, we spend the principal majority amount of our time um, working on the college process with our seniors and we're happy to do it um, so I want to thank everybody for uh, watching and uh, if there is anything else you guys need, please feel free to reach out to your counselor and uh, happy.